Mm. How's it going? <clears throat> I was asked to do a wee play here on the Facebook page. Um, another one of these seed trout plays that I like. It's a, an unusual colour setup, but it's a nice, it works well. It's uh, purple's not often used in, uh, in trout flies, but uh, it's used in some patterns, and this pattern it works really well. It's a real bright line salmon sea trout, mainly targeted in locks or some brownies take it too. But this is mainly a, a bright boy for the salmon sea trout. The hook on the vice is a B175 size 10. The thread is 70 denier UTC, and a chartreuse just because I like the head. You can put whatever color of uh, head you want on her thread to change the head so the tail is hot orange tippets I like to make it about the length of the shank so I mark it off where I want it to be transfer it over to the other hand pinching it to this turns see how it's sitting Just take it back to wherever I like it to be about the bar of the hook where my body starts. So I'm going to tidy this up before I get to the end here. I'm going to just pull up all those bits and really make sure there's nothing pointing forward. There's a, a lot going on in this wee flight, so you want to have plenty of room at the head. The next uh, thing is the rib. So this one is a uh, copper wire. So get yourself a little bit of your copper wire. And this one you can put whatever kind of a rub on it as well because this is a bushy one. It'll be very hard to see the rub. I just like wire because it lasts longer. So catch it on the far side. You don't have to be too worried about it being straight or not. It's a dug body. So this, once you get to that point, just tend to get Get your, your dubbing on. Now, the dubbing on this fly, I have done two different colours before, and the one works just as good as the other. But for uh, the one that I posted on Facebook and the one I was asked to tie, is a pure purple body. But the other one is a purple and magenta. It was uh, magenta at the rear and purple at the front as well. But I don't know how much you've seen it with the hackles. It's really the colour, and everything's coming from the hackles. You could probably put whatever colour dubbing on this. As long as it wasn't too bright, it wouldn't show through as much. There's a lot of hackles on this play, but it does work. It's a good play. So, purple. See this for? Get it on as you're doing your doubling. It's like all doubling. Spin it one direction and keep turning. Do it turns into a little rope on the tying thread and whack her down. I'm going to take away some of them longer fibers now. As I say, there's a few hackles going on this, and the first two being uh, purple cock and a magenta cock neck the purple in front and uh, magenta behind there's a lot of Irish wet flies that use uh, double hackles and triple hackles for the primer and there's two real ways of doing it you can do it as I'm going to do it here now which is keep the, the feathers double sided and do not strip the fire side and just restrict it how many turns you're going to put on and then there's just putting it on straight but you have to be very very careful when you're putting it on like this double sided not to overcrowd the fly with too many hackles it's not you can do it is going to look bushy and that is the point of the fly but so i do these by hand because i find it very hard to, to tie two hackles in with hackle players so normally i would do two three turns at the front but i'm only going to do one full turn because as i say there's two hackles there normally you do five four five turns down the body but because there's two hackles there I'm going to keep it restricted to maybe two and a half three maximum so there's two there up down the body I would say two and a half I'm not going to come over there's enough hackle there as I say you could do it normal and strip off one side of the the hackles and then you can just do it normal two or three turns at the front and four or five down the body it won't be as dense or you can do it the way I do keep don't strip the hackles and uh, just be careful with your turns one at the back at the head and just two at the body 
So come up at 12 o'clock, my rib once I bring it through my polymer tackle, pull it up with a thread, keep tension the thread and bend the copper wire to its line alongside the shank. This will keep it smooth for the head tackles that are going on after this. So bend and worry that way. Come back down. As I say, these are very bushy little flies, but uh, a good wake and a oh, wind, one day they work the job and see how to do like a bright one. So that's not looking too bad there. Now the next hackle they go on as a a blue. This one's a slightly darker blue, you know, a cobalt blue. I often use a teal blue or a lighter blue, but it doesn't suit this pattern as well. I like the slightly darker stuff. I have used guinea cloud again on this pattern. I've messed with it a few different ways, but this is the way I tend to fall back and tie most of the time with the two hackles. The blue, darker blue grizzle hen, chuchus thread. As the combo I seem to keep coming back to but I always tinker with things every now and again but this one has stuck with me for a while so preen everything back just beforehand like that just to get some kind of shape or bend on them keep your stem at 12 o'clock hold all the fibers back when it gets to tw 6 o'clock let it go reposition your hands or use hackle flies I just prefer to use my hands when it's at 6 o'clock preen back everything Bring the stem to 12 o'clock and as you can see that stem's rolling as it rolls um adjusting it to keep it all nice and straight 12 o'clock hold back six o'clock let go and so on and so forth you get the right amount of hackles you want to see on the fly sometimes these hand cycles hand hackles can be a bit soft and all over the show but just take your time if you have a rotary race like I have there, it can be handy, but if you have nimble fingers, just keep pulling back everything. You get the right amount of fibre and colour on. Yeah. That looks pretty good to me. I'm not going to use all this feather, it's pretty good wee feather. So catch it at the point where you've, you've got enough fibre on, as long as you keep the thread turned tight, you can let go of the, the stem. Travel down to the back of the eye. And back up a turn. I'm going to hold the Ted thread tight and try and take away some of the fibers from the hackle that's at the bottom here that I don't need because this is a saddle hackle. I will be able to bend this back and tie it in just for a bit of extra strength. You don't have to do that, you could just cut it off. It's not that important. But if you, if you have a thin enough stem, you have the chance to, to do that, just do it. It doesn't make it last a bit long. Cut or break away. The bit you don't want, it's whatever you're comfortable doing. There's a wee hair there, it's just a wee fiber there. Now, the next thing to go on, if I can find it, is a jungle cock eyes. You can position these the way you like them or make them as big as small as you, as you like them. I like a fairly small eye kept fairly short on these. I don't like it too mad crazy long. And I like to keep a lot of the fiber the wee white bits that are on the side on as well not just the eye it sits better against the hackle if you strip it all off and just use the eye sometimes it loses a bit of its mobility and it, uh, it sinks under the hackle if you don't know what jungle cock is I'll show you the cape now in a minute I position mags one at a time I don't uh, tie them in in pairs but that's entirely up to you whichever way you like to do it get that positioned how you like it, I like it to be sort of sitting up under the wing more than sideways along the shank but that's personal preference more than anything I don't know if it's one's better than the other and uh, I don't like that jungle cock eye so I'll go get me another one sometimes they just don't there's a bad curve in that one I don't like the shape of it so strip away all the fluff at the bottom that you don't need Introduce it to the hook a few turns to get it on. Have a look. I like it pointing up the gap, is exactly how I like it. If I can, I can pull back all that jungle cock and come to the eye 
and try and tidy up as much as you can of the thread and then come in and just take out the little tab ends of it fold it back and come on with your whip finish if I can find it now kind of a, a lengthy wee flighty tie and a kind of a an oddball coloration for a trout fly being the purple but for sea trout and grillish on lakes brown trout like it too but it's more I was tying it more for sea trout in mind than anything else so a few turns of your whip finish and a fly like this with the amount of hackles and the amount of uh, work up front don't panic too much about the, the eye being a little bit or the head being a little bit big they just that's the state of the fly it's the way it, it, uh, it just ends up being unless you use some of the nano threads you can get better results that way but I just I'm lazy I don't like buying a whole heap of different materials and having a whole heap of different materials on the bench and having to swap between them so I just tend to stick to the traditional type material so that's the wee fly there tied i hope you like it i hope you can see it and i hope the video turns out well and i'll see you next time